Welcome guys to part one of product virtual photography. And so today we're going to just make um, an iced tea brand, an orange iced tea brand. And so for part one, we're going to be talking about textures, how to add textures to materials and how they kind of respond um, to light at the same time. But for this, for this first part in part three, in part two, no, in part three, would actually, um, go into, into depth about the lighting of the stage and everything. Um, but part one, I'm just going to walk you through some small details to think about, um, or to consider while I was working with textures and models. Um, so this model, I got it on turbo squid. Um, so turbo squid, I got it for 19 bucks. Um, and so what I was looking for was glasses with uh, lime or lemon slices, you know, so I saw this and I was like, okay, this looks really good. But when you when you purchase it, it is not going to come looking like this. Okay. And so I purchased the OBJ. So when you're downloading, make sure you download an OBJ file. Okay. So everything else, unless you have those programs, fine. But with Adobe Dementia, the best one to use is OBJ file. Um, and so when you download and import it into your scene, into your page, this is what's going to look like. Um, it's going to come with the jug, this the liquid, this the lemon slices. I think it's the mint leaves, ice cubes, and these are the glasses with the liquid in it and the straw with some lemon slices. So this is what's going to come as just a flat, raw default model. So to import, you go to file, you click on import and then 3D model and wherever your file is located and you just bring it in. Okay. So first of all, now everything just looks boring. And, um, I mean, depending on your preference, you might want to set up your scene first, then add textures. But I feel like that's, that just makes the process even way difficult. Um, you get to a point, you set up your scene and then now you have to go in and disassemble things and add textures to see what it looks like. So I like to do it from step one. So step one is adding the textures. So, um, but before I jump into that, I think, um, there's just a, a little interesting, really good resource that would be good for you to kind of consider reading through. Um, and so it's found on, oh my gosh, I can't say his last name, Von Schneider, Von Schneider, I think, dot com. Um, and so this is written by John Vio, and it says mastering the art of 3D lighting with Adobe Dimension. This was the cherry on top of my journey in learning Adobe Dimension was just understanding how to work with lighting. Um, in a cinematic way. And so he breaks down different, different types of, uh, lighting, understanding it's, it's interaction with textures and materials. Um, and so this it's a really good article, you know, just, you know, take some time, just read through, he gives examples. Um, he explains. So yeah. So if you have time, um, just check it out. I would have the link in the description and just so you know, I'm not getting, I'm not being paid to tell you about this. I just love this resource. And so I recommend it. That's really good. Um, so I will put this link in the description, but yeah, so let's get back to Adobe dimension. Okay. So when you think of materials, when you think of, uh, real world, an orange slice. Okay. This one, I just put an image on it. You can see, let me select this one. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm pressing the key W for the wand tool to select the specific one. Um, if I don't use that and I just click on this because they come in a group, it just selects all of them, but I just want to select an individual one. So I just press W on the keyboard and then click it. And then it just takes me directly here in scene. It takes me directly to the file. Um, yeah, to the layer. So I click on it and I click the arrow to drop it down. And so here I just added an image on it. And so to add an image to a model, you just go to file import and then place graphic on model. Now, once you go into the model and you have this view, that's why this part is not enabled. 
And the reason why is because you have to go out and click on the layer directly and then go to import. And then now it's active. Okay. So I added the image on top and with the image, you know, you select the, you select the image layer on the placement. It's under decal. So with the decal, you can move it this way, left, right, up and down, whatever. In scale, you can increase, you can decrease, you can play around with the rotation of the image. But another option is fill. So I find the fill, mm, fill, it, it just, it, it stretches and it multiplies the image um, many times. It repeats the image many times, which, nah, I don't really, it, this, this function has its time and place. Um, but not for, not for this situation. Okay. So click on the graphic. I'm going to go back to decal. And V on the keyboard is to bring back your selection, your pointer. Okay. Your select tool. So the so V on the keyboard. So in this case, let's say I expand, I scale it up. So in this case, you know, you might say, hey, you know, it looks good enough. That's fine. Let me just, you know, render it and look what it looks like. See what it looks like with the lighting. And you can see it's pretty flat. And so what we're going to do now is what I found out was in Adobe Dimension, you can add. Um, okay, sorry. So you click here on the main model, the wire. There's something called normal. And so it gives us a short description here. So normals creates the appearance of details on the surface. Okay. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to add detail to the orange. And to do that, you need to download. Um, I downloaded, I downloaded, um, and purchased somewhat it looks like a vector so you just go to google and you type in you know orange slice um and what i realized the difference between a vector looking type and then an actual orange photo is um photoshop is able to pick up the detail more in the vector looking images rather than a realistic orange slice Okay. I hope, I hope that kind of explains kind of helps. So what you do here is, you know, you could duplicate your layer. You go to 3d. Oh, sorry. You go to filter, you go to 3d and you go to general map, general, uh, generate normal map. And so what this does is Photoshop is going to pick out the darks, the dark parts of the slice and the light parts of the slice. And that's what it's going to use to make this flat image seem more 3D with more of a texture. So I click on it. And so this is what it does. So you see it has brought up the dark parts and sunk in the light parts. It has brought in more shadow and contrast. And this is what we need for our orange in Adobe Dimension. And so on this side, you have blur, you know, do you want it to be more soft? So you can see here, you know, how much detail do you want? Depending on what work you're doing, do you want a lot of detail? Then you take the, you, you reduce, you reduce the, the blur. Okay. So you can see more detail here. And then the scale of the detail is also again, how much of it you want, how intense you want it to be. So you can see if I take it down, it's not that, it's not that intense. And so I like to keep mine around a hundred, you know, about a hundred seems good. Yeah. So once I have this, you save it as you export it as a PNG in wherever your file location is. So after saving it, you go back into Adobe dimension and in here, when your uh, model is still selected, you go down to normal. You click on normal, you select file, and then my file location is here. And then this is it. You click on it, you click open and boom, 
Look at that difference. Just look at that. You know? And so with this, you can also click on the on the normal map and then you can scale or oh, sorry offset you can rotate it left to right right to left up and down on the y axis okay and then you can scale so with this one <clears throat> excuse me it doesn't have the function of fit which i feel like that would have been you know like the image when you put the image on it chooses a decal or fill <clears throat> excuse me so that's kind of i hope adobe would be able to fix you know fix this or add that function where you can make it a decal so in this case you know you just repeat it to kind of eyeball you know where would be a good place for this texture i think this would be your best bet so again so just know that it doesn't wrap all around. It's just going to wrap the front face of wherever you selected. Okay. So because this is the part that I'm I'm going to be needing most in the whole scene. So don't worry about the back. Um. So after that, as you can see, this is a this is a different you know. So the detail in the orange itself from the graphic. Hmm. It all depends on the kind of image that you use. So I think the one that I purchased, uh, this is not the one. Um, so I'm going to select it. Yeah, this is the one that I purchased. Yes. So you see this one has, so this is the vector image. Um, so I'm just going to scale it down a bit. I'm going to click, press V on my keyboard. Going to scale it down a bit more. Okay. So now you can see it has, it looks a lot better than before. And so if I click my render just to see what that looks like, it looks more of like an orange. Okay. And it's not perfect like real world, but it is way better than what it was before as just a flat looking image. Um, so yeah, so that's what I did for the orange and then for the glass. Um, so press one, a W, sorry, W just to select the glass. So for the glass material, you go over to materials. Um, so I, I used, uh, frosted glass. Okay. Frosted glass. I think that seems to be the best one. And so you can see there's more detail here with the frosted glass. Um, and so for the liquid, click W, select the liquid. So for the liquid, um, I used water material, just water in here. And then I clicked on base color. And then with the color, you know, whatever color you want your, your liquid to be, you know, it could be blue, it could be uh, like a like a Gatorade kind of iced tea, whichever one you want. So I, I just had like a like a yellow ish look to mine. Um, uh, yeah, so let's see what it looks like when it's inside. When it's inside the glass. So you can just click and drag. So again, once your thing is your your model is selected, you just use these arrows to move it up or down, left or right. Okay. So I'm just gonna place it in here, and let's render and see what it looks like. Yeah, that is decently nice. Yeah. So just play around with that and uh, see what looks best to you. Okay. So for the ice, the ice I used. Select the ice cube. You just select the whole folder. I use the material um, damaged glass. Okay. And then I press V on my keyboard to take that in the glass. And then I render. Okay, 
you see what that looks like? You know, it looks like real ice cubes. Okay. And so with the leaves, you do the same thing as you as you as I did with the with the orange. Okay. So this one, I think it already has a map on it. W select one. I think it already has a map on it. Yes, it does. Or I, th I think I added this one already, but it's pretty much the same thing. Just get a leaf image. Um, either vector one will be a preferable one will be a vector. Take it into Photoshop. Um, go to filter 3D. 3D and then generate normal map. And then you save it as a PNG and then drop it in there. Okay. So for now, I'm going to add a graphic on top of it. So get a file import. Oh no, I have to be out of it. Okay. Have it selected file import place graphic. And then I have a leaf here. It's okay. And so here I press V on my keyboard. I'm just going to rotate. I think it was 90 degrees. Uh, negative 90 degrees. And then I'm going to scale. And then I'm going to rotate it a little bit just to have it align a bit, scale it up a bit. Press V, click and drag. For perfection in this case, because we're not going to have really close up detailed shots. So it doesn't really matter. Awesome. So that's what I did for all the leaves. Um, takes a bit of time, but it's worth it at the end. And so when you render, look at that difference. Look at what it looks like. That is so awesome with the, with the graphic and the texture and without the graphic on top and just just the texture. So yeah, um, with so I yeah, pretty much did the same thing or the jug and these glasses. What I did was I just, um, what you do is you just uh, add mod, add the textures on one glass and just duplicate it. So you don't have to be doing two separate ones. And then with the jug, use the same thing. Feel free to play around with um, Adobe Dimension uh, textures here for the glass, uh, textures with the water. Um, and then that's, that's all I did for textures. And so uh, thanks for checking out part one. We're going to jump into part two where I'm going to set up my scene. And uh, yeah, let's just have some fun.